This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. The UEFA Champions League has the second legs of its quarterfinal matches coming up this week. And who better to break those down than Dr. Ed Fang? We're going to have Ed on today to break down both the UCL and talk some more NFL draft to get you ready for what should be a fun couple of weeks in sports. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire, joined here as mentioned by Dr. Ed Fang. You can find his work over at thepowerrank.com and check out ed on twitter at the power rank and ed i didn't even know you had a ucl model so this is kind of a fun thing for me as i've been trying to get into epl talking to austin cast about that so expanding my soccer horizons today how are you doing i'm doing great you mentioned that uh no one better to talk to about champions league than me that is not true in <laughs> fact it's like my first champions league bet ever in my life i believe this morning um but I do have expected goals adjusted for opponents, and I do think it's interesting. Uh, I do believe it, uh, you know, lends some insight into to what's going on, and uh, excited to talk about it. I am too because it is. It sounds fairly complex. Uh, it also sounds like it may overlap with some other sports potentially in uh, the ways you can utilize that. We'll talk about Ed's model, dig into what it is and what it says about the next couple of days in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. We are here every weekday breaking down MLB, PGA, we've got PGA tomorrow, Brandon Gadula, NBA playoffs tomorrow, two with Brandon as well. All all that here in this same podcast feed. So search for covering the spread wherever you get your podcasts, hit subscribe. And if you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating as well. Let's dig into this UCL betting model, Ed, because you mentioned you have expected goals here and adjust for opponent, but my question is how, uh, because these teams are coming from different leagues. And obviously you have right. matchups in the Champions League. You yeah, at some point right. to compare, but that sounds tough to me. So break down the nuts and bolts here of how you're able to make those adjustments when they're playing in very different leagues as a baseline. The model is really, really simple. It's expected goals. I get them straight from uh, fbref.com. So this is stats bomb. Um, and... I adjust for strength of schedule, not with my algorithm because I haven't had a chance to implement that yet, but with just least squares. So you can search Ken Massey thesis online and you can go download his undergrad thesis, which is probably 30 years old, but you can read about all about how to do that and implement it in Python. So there's nothing new, innovative. Um, mm -hmm. Anyone can go out and do this right now. And it, it it's nice because the results kind of make sense. And uh, oh, Okay, sorry. So here's the key thing, right? So you have f the big five leagues and they all play each other and you can get pretty good estimates for how they do within the league, right? Because you, you have a pretty good big data set and everything is is pretty well connected and you have relatively a, a large number of matches. To connect everything, You I use the Champions League data. I also use Europa League data. And it's pretty similar to college football, right? Where you have, yeah. you know, a couple games out of conference that is used to connect everything up and you make schedule adjustments from there. And that's essentially what is going on with Champions League. Now, I did try to do this like a decade ago, eight years ago, something, it was whatever, whatever, whenever there was a World Cup and then there was a champion, you know, there was a Champions League after this. I tried to do this with goals and it was a bunch of hot garbage. <laughs> Uh, essentially, there was a small sample size of mm -hmm. Champions League games. And I think that year the Spanish teams had done really well in Champions League. Um, and it's, you know, it's not surprising to get a pretty big fluctuation in goals uh, in six matches or, or or eight or nine or ten, whatever it is in Champions League for that particular year. So the results really made no sense. And it didn't make any kind of sense to uh, to use the predictions from that. The solution back then for goals would have been to be like, okay, well, let's wait this year the most, but let's include your uh, data from the past year and wait that less, and maybe a year after, and hopefully with a couple seasons of goal, a uh, couple seasons of data, you would get some reasonable results for the certain uh, the current year. Well, you let enough time pass, and people at FB Ref come up with uh, XG, 
expected goals. And this is a, a metric. I mean, so XG is simply the sum of the probabilities of every shot, right? So it's like an expected number of goals that you're supposed to get in every game. And it measures the difference between, you know, getting a bunch of really good opportunities as opposed to, you know, some teams that just try to bomb it from outside the box, which are low probability scoring opportunities. So now that we have this metric, everything makes a lot more sense with one season's worth of data. I don't know if they make complete sense, and we can get into that a little bit more, uh, but they're close enough to the markets that I feel pretty good about it and uh, actually made a bet on it. So we can talk about that. I did want to ask because the college football part is what I was getting at before, where it, there may be some overlap between different sports you model. Do you feel like having that background in college football makes you more confident in building this model, knowing you've done something somewhat civil, similar with a good amount of success elsewhere? I mean, a little bit. Uh, you know, every sport's going to be different. And, you know, what is enough data in college might not be enough data in soccer. It looks like it is in soccer. So I'm happy about that. And, um, you know, like I said, it's not perfect, right? So right, right now, um, if I just look at the rankings, you have a lot of English teams at the top, right? You have Man City at the top. No surprise at all. Arsenal second. No surprise at all. Newcastle is actually third. It's kind of interesting. And then, um, you know, you have like Man United at 11th and Brighton at 7th. So there's a lot of English teams up there. There's not a lot of German teams up there. Um, you know, there's Bayern Munich at fourth. Um, and then Leipzig is all the way down at 20th. And my team Dortmund is at 26th. And it was a lot different the year before uh, last year where Bayern was at the top and then Leipzig was sixth and Dortmund was 11th. So, you know, I mean, has the Bundesliga dropped off that much? Maybe, you know, I mean, uh, Bayern Munich lost, lost the, their best goal scorer in Robert Lewandowski and, and the player that I thought was the hair apparent there, Jermaine Musiala, did not look good against Man City in, in the last Champions League match. Not, not the dominant player that he was at the World Cup. Obviously, it's really hard. To, to be a dominant player in the Champions League. So it's not necessarily a knock on him. Maybe it was a bad game. Um, you know, Dortmund is at, was actually leading as, or as close to leading the Bundesliga. They're, they're definitely not as good as last year when you learn, lose Erling Holland, who who's now at Man City, the best goal scorer in the world. That, that's obviously tough. And I think Dortmund's defense has gotten worse. Um, but I don't know if everyone in the Bundesliga has fallen off that much. So you could definitely see some kind of small sample uh uh, you know, there's probably still some bias with just the limited amount of games uh, that are connecting up the different leagues. And uh, I'm trying to figure out, uh, you know, what's going on there. Uh, probably won't have complete answers uh, without doing some more work. But uh, I guess the point is I'm not completely confident about everything that's going right. on, but we'll just, we'll just use it. Uh, we'll use use it with caution and we'll go from there. So you mentioned Erling Holland and talked about Man City being number one. They are also the favorites right now over at FanDuel Sportsbook, minus 115 to win the Champions League. And Ed, obviously, you just built this model, so you don't have like a futures model to know what the actual like odds of them winning right. are. But when you look at these odds and compare them to what your numbers say, are there any teams that stand out as being potentially undervalued, maybe even Man City, despite being the favorite at minus 115? Right. I mean, I would bet against Man City at your peril. They have the best goal scorer in the world. They have the best manager in the world, uh, Pep Guardiola. Well, in my opinion, he's the best manager in the world. I think he's someone that comes from kind of the Spanish background, but understands that soccer is more than just about possessing the ball. Like you actually have to attack. Um, so that's my opinion. It, it's probably not. It, it probably goes about beyond my opinion that Erling Holland's the best goal scorer in the world. Just have to look at his track record. He's been lighting it up all year real madrid is is really a, a, really a pretty talented team you wouldn't be surprised at all if they won the champions league final again this year just like they did against man city last year pep has actually never won the champions league with man city so that's going to be a narrative that you hear a lot and then napoli is a really interesting team as well they're actually down um against uh Milan right now, but they, uh, but there's a really, really talented team and, and people like uh, Ryan O'Hanlon of ESPN, someone who I trust in the soccer opinion has, has tweeted about this team being a one that can win the champions league. So uh, yeah, I don't really have any opinion on, on these futures. Um, I think, you know, Real Madrid, Napoli certainly could win, uh, but Man City should be the favorite. 
Yeah, again, Man City minus 115 right now at FanDuel Sportsbook uh, as a favorite there, and they are a top Ed's uh, rankings as well, but uh, unsure of whether there is value right there. We do have a couple of games coming up, uh, two on Tuesday, two on Wednesday. These are the second legs of the quarterfinals. Ed, when you look at those right now, any numbers stand out to you based on what your model is saying? Yeah, so, you know, my model was showing value on Napoli, but that has actually moved a lot. And the reason is because their top goal scorer, uh, Victor Osimhen, uh, came back from an injury. He played 20 minutes in a Serie A match over the weekend. And so now those odds are, are pretty much exactly consistent with what my numbers say. Uh, Napoli was minus 135 this morning, so it's actually moved up. Um, I have them at about a 56% chance to win that. Um, I believe they're down a goal uh, on aggregate to Milan, so they do have some work to do. Um, they cannot just win one nothing, but uh, but yeah. Anyways, uh, so that that's a that's still a competitive series, right? And then the other one that's really interesting is Benfica. Man, that numbers moved too. So um, my numbers like Benfica, and in mm-hmm. fact, they the Benfica is on the road. <clears throat> Got to remember in soccer, the top team is at home. Uh, Benfica uh, is when I look at it, uh, basically it, with with their being on the road, they're exactly even with Inter. So I have about 38% chance for each team to pull away with the win. Uh, that certainly suggests value on Benfica. I bet it at plus 250 this morning. Uh, like I said, my first Champions League uh, bet ever. So Benfica plays in the Port- Portuguese League. And when I first ran these numbers, I only put the top five leagues which does not include Portugal uh, and the Champions League and Europa League data. And Benfica was really, really, really high. And I was like, okay, well, they're still playing. So I might as well throw in all of the Portuguese data as well. And, you know, they're, they're destroying the Portuguese league, right? Like their, their XG diff is like 1.8 goals or something like something insane like that. And, but, you know, what the algorithm does is it chews on all that data and like, you know, puts all the Portuguese teams in the right spot. And and Benfica actually comes down when you get more data, but they're still pretty good. They are, man, they moved up to fifth. I think they were a little bit lower. I think I had them third when you only had the Champions League results. I think they moved down to eighth when I did that. Still a really good team. I think they moved up. Oh, that's the other thing. Um, You know, when on the first leg, uh, they actually had more XG than Inter did. And it was close, but Inter actually got a PK. Um, in P- Inter got a PK, and it was not one. It, it was not a play in which they were really attacking, and someone had right. to stick their hand out. It was kind of like a fluky-ish one. And every PK is 0.75 xG. So it was a you know it, it was a type of play that wasn't really earned. So mm-hmm. Benfica really did outplay them at home. Unfortunately, they, they are down two nothing on aggregate. Uh, they got a real hill to climb, but I do think there is value in betting them to at least win because uh, there's certainly scenarios in which they're up 2-1 and Inter's just going to park the bus and not really attack because they just want to go through. So I do like Benfica plus 240. Uh, I have it at 38% that they win that match. Uh, and yeah, there you go. And the implied odds there, 29% on uh, plus 240. So pretty big gap between what you have and what the market has. And I feel like we could see situations like this and make a lot of sense where you may get a big gap because the XG for Inter was swayed by that penalty. And penalties are a skill. Drawing penalties are typically a skill. But like you said, if it wasn't on an attack, maybe the 0.75 there is less meaningful than it would be if it was a PK drawn where they were about to get a goal, basically. Right. And and when I do this better, like I think there is there there should be some value every time a team draws uh a PK, but it's not 0.75. Mm-hmm. It should be something less. Right. And um there there is a number and it exists and hopefully I'll be able to estimate it uh once you mess around with things, but uh but right now it's just just the full data in there and uh suggest value on Benfica. We'll have to reach out to Ted Knutson of Stats Bomb see if he can get us uh some uh weighted uh pk right. expected goals metrics i'm sure he's already working on it knowing him um but well, no, maybe yeah, that's yeah. the next step he has it all right because like yeah. i mean the, you know the xg is just sums of shots right and those are on certain things so you could actually just estimate it if you had a list of mm-hmm. uh pks in all the leagues i'm sure that exists somewhere so yeah all right but so we are on there. 
Benfica plus 240 against Inter. That match is on Wednesday in the UCL second legs of their quarterfinals. Did want to talk some more NFL draft this week here as well, Ed. We talked about this last week. And one thing you were talking about was the value of taking the learnings of one market with the way things move and applying it to another market. Now, one of those could be the number one overall pick. Bryce Young is now minus 750 at FanDuel. He is even shorter than that uh, elsewhere. He was actually off the board briefly at FanDuel today. He's 750 there now or minus 750. So it seems like the, the market is gaining more confidence. Bryce Young will go one overall, but we can also apply that learning to other picks, as you discussed. Other ripple effect is a bet you brought up last week was the number of quarterbacks taken inside the first round. You won it over four and a half. It was plus 144 at the time. It shortened to even money the next day, bounced back to minus or bounced back to plus 148 and is now back down to plus 106. So we've seen a lot of movement both there and with the number one overall pick, which means maybe the value there is gone, but there could be value elsewhere as a result of the market's confidence in these picks. So when you look at the board right now, Ed, and try to glean what you can from market movement elsewhere, are there any bets that stand out to you as being values as a result of maybe increased knowledge in these respective markets? Yeah, I feel like it's been tough. I mean, there's a couple of things. I, I mentioned in my newsletter on Saturday that you know Ben Robinson came on my podcast and um, likes B. John Robinson to go higher than his numbers say. A lot of sharp market shop. Yeah, sharp mockers that I look at have Robinson pretty high. He's running back out of Texas. And um, but no one, and at least not any sports books I have, you know, have a, a draft position on him yet. So that's something I'm still looking at. Um, yeah, FanDuel doesn't have those up. I hope I hope the team does get those up pretty soon. Mm-hmm. But one thing that I have been looking at is, you know, FanDuel is starting to put up odds for the number seven pick, the number eight pick. And those are pretty interesting. Uh, Bijan Robinson is actually the favorite to, to go eight to Atlanta. Um, and that's that's exactly where Ben Robinson has him going. Um, Atlanta has a lot of other needs, right? They could clearly you can see from that that they could use an edge rusher as the as the yeah. next three guys are edge rushers. But uh, the one I want to focus on is actually the number seven pick because uh, so you know FanDuel has this is Las Vegas. Las Vegas could take a quarterback, but they have a lot of other needs. And one of those needs is in the secondary. Uh, this preliminary market agrees with that. Uh, Christian Gonzalez is uh, a cornerback, and so is Devin Witherspoon. And if you actually sum up those implied probabilities, you get about 50%. Um, so to me, it makes sense that Las Vegas would go with a cornerback here. Over at DK, you can actually bet Las Vegas plus 175 to draft a cornerback with their first pick. Uh, I like that a lot. I think it makes sense. Obviously, it could blow up in your face and they go get Will Levis or, or maybe Anthony Richardson falls to them. Um, they do have needs on the offensive line as well. That's why you see Peter Skronsky there. But uh, I think it makes sense that they get a cornerback. I like I like uh, Las Vegas draft the cornerback plus 175. And I think that's that's the other way to use markets to your advantage is we were talking about how, OK, we can apply learnings from the first overall pick to the second overall pick and stuff like that. But also you can take implied probabilities of a cornerback being drafted at one book and apply that to betting that specific market in another right. book. So it's kind of just, right. again, leaning on the market again with caution as always. It's not as liquid yeah. of a market as other spots, but like leaning on the market right. to tell you what you want to know. For sure. And and I will say that like this market is new at FanDuel. I, I, I'm pretty sure it was not up on Friday. So mm-hmm. this is new. So I don't think this has been bet into that much. So right. these right. odds are probably not as sharp as, well, I mean, certainly not as sharp as a market like the number one pick that's been around for forever. But, you know, someone f- smart at FanDuel put this up and it hasn't moved yet. So I, right. I think it was pretty likely that, you know, they probably did their homework and, and saw a lot of the sharp mockers are, are, Ah, giving a cornerback to Las Vegas with that seven pick. And um, yeah, you can use that at other books. And again, just like using the signals the market is giving you and interpreting those and deciding, okay, 
is this the best way to bet this? Can I find some better markets elsewhere and stuff like that? Just kind of asking yourself those questions before placing your bets. That is Dr. Ed Feng. Do uh, Ed, we're going to wrap things up on your end for today, but do want to thank you for tuning in and more NFL draft stuff coming up next week. We're going to have a full breakdown of the NFL draft. Talk about your favorite bets available on the board the week of the draft to get everybody ready. But Ed, what is going on for you right now over at the Power Rank? Yeah, I'm writing my uh, Five Nuggets newsletter every Saturday. It's a curated list of, of bets uh, from people that I trust and, and analytics that I do and what other people do and some humor as well. So you can check that out at thepowerrank.com. And there is some UCL stuff in there as well. At least there was uh, this past couple of weeks. So find that over at thepowerrank.com if you want to see Ed's full UCL info over there at the Power Rank. Some more in-depth explanations of... Uh, how he uses this stuff as well over on the power rank find that there check out ed on twitter as well at the power rank and find uh, ed's work thepowerrank.com ed we'll talk to you next week for some nfl draft stuff appreciate it that sounds good jim thanks all righty again check out ed on twitter at the power rank if you want the five nuggets saturday you can go to thepowerrank.com to sign up for that we'll dig into what went down on the show here last week recap uh recommendations here on the show for transparency in just one second but first the nba playoffs are here you can turn crossovers into cash with fanduel just visit fanduel right now and place a five dollar bet and you'll get an instant 150 bucks in bonus bets, win or lose. There's no better place to bet all the playoff action than America's number one sportsbook. Just go to FanDuel and sign up to get $150 in bonus bets when you bet your first $5. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino, LLC. Bonus issued is non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG. In Massachusetts, hope is here. GamblingHelplineMA.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope and Y. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In, in Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700 or in Kansas, ksgamblinghelp.com. Louisiana is 1-877-770-STOP. In Maryland, mdgamblinghelp.org or in West Virginia, go to 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Let's go back show that go back through the show here last week talking about the week long recommendations we gave out here on the show. Let's start things off with golf, the RBC Heritage. We have Brandon Gadula on to break down that. You can find Brandon on Twitter at Gadula13. Matt Fitzpatrick was the winner, beating out uh Jordan Spieth in a playoff, a wild playoff uh for that one. Not on the uh, outright board there for Fitzpatrick. For Brandon, he had Xander Schauffele plus 2,500, Tony Finau plus 2,700, and Tom Kim 37 to 1 as the three outrights Brandon liked there. The non outrights were Max Homa plus 360 top 10. He had uh, Andrew Putnam plus 450 top 20, and Brendan Todd plus 450 top 20 as well. None of those wound up hitting. Uh, Homa missed the cuts, didn't play very well there. Putnam and Todd uh, both in the 50s. So, uh, not getting anything there on the RBC Heritage front from Brandon's end, but uh, a team event this week. It is the Zurich. We're going to break that down with Brandon tomorrow here on the show and also talk about some NBA playoff games, talking about the three game slate for tomorrow. We'll break down all three of those with Brandon to get his thoughts on his favorite bets on those. EPL show was with Austin Cass. You can find Austin on Twitter at Austin Cass. The First bet mention was Alexander Isak to score or assist at minus 115 for Aston Villa versus Newcastle. Uh, in that one, Aston Villa wound up winning 3 0. Uh, Isak uh, playing for Newcastle, and Newcastle did get blank there, so no scores or assists there for Isak. Was pretty involved throughout the match, but couldn't quite emerge. For the Sunday games, or for, sorry, for the other Saturday game, uh, one of them was Julian Alvarez to score. Now, Austin said before the, or during the show, before recommending this, wait till lineups are out because Alvarez may not start. He was thinking Erling Holland might get a rest day with Man City playing in the uh, in the UCL. 
Holling did start. Uh, so Alvarez not in the starting lineup. So that bet would not have been a recommendation if you did hold off until lines were announced an hour before draw, uh, before the match. So hopefully you did have the patience there, hold off an Alvarez to score. He did not score at minus 115 because he was not in the starting lineup. So hopefully again, utilize the context Austin gives uh, with those bets. The Sunday bet, Austin did like Nottingham Forest to win or draw. That was plus 115 in that one. They were not able to uh, keep that game as close, so uh, no win there for Nottingham Forest. Uh, I believe they lost 2-0 in that one. Finally, wrapping up here with NASCAR on my end, I had a couple bets for the truck race. Those were Ross Chastain to win at 8-1 to and Stuart Fries in top five at plus 220. This race got a little nutty because there was some rain, and they actually ran rain tires or wet weather tires for the first time. And Chastain, rough start. He didn't run well in qualifying, qualified very poorly, wasn't great in practice, and was a lap down at one point, I believe. Did work his way back up to 12th, but that's obviously not a win. Um, Stuart Friesen had some issues during the race, I believe during the rain, so he didn't finish well either, so no wins there. Things went better in Xfinity and Cup. The Xfinity side, I had Brandon Jones top five at plus 160. Jones wasn't super great the entire day, but did wind up finishing exactly fifth, so I did cash at plus 160 there. And then in the Cup Series, Eric Almarola top 10 plus 230. Almarola qualified, I believe, third for that race, ran up front the entire time, finished eighth. Uh, so a cash there. He closed at minus 130 to finish inside the top 10. So that's why I do tend to do a lot of stuff before practice. You'll see numbers move. You want to get the best number. Almarola's value was gone before the race began. So happy to get that one at plus 230, close at minus 130, and get the win as well. So NASCAR did go okay this week on the show side of things. I uh, had Kyle Larson uh, to win podium and top 10 over in the betting guide over on Number Fire. So again, we'll check those out as well. If you want some additional uh, recommendations for NASCAR post-practice, we're doing some good data, but happy to get the Almarola bet and the Brandon Jones bet uh, from the show recommendations on Friday. That's all we got here for today on Covering the Spread. Big thank you once again to Dr. Ed Feng for swinging by talking UCL, talking some NFL draft. We'll talk to Ed again next week to break down the draft in full. Also tomorrow, talking NBA playoffs with Brandon Gadula, his insights on all three games on the slate. So that should be a fun one. Uh, do not forget to subscribe to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast to get these right as they are posted. Just search for Covering the Spread. Hit subscribe, and if you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating. Again, these shows are up over on the FanDuel YouTube page as well. If you have any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your bets for the UCL. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to talk some NBA playoffs. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.